Let me um, also engage Alfred now. Alfred, I'm, I brought Alfred in today be, as a data scientist because even though uh, the number of questions I've asked about the data source of these 2.6 million jobs from government sources, they are unable to tell me. Alfred has been mining the data from the available data sources to fact check what the, the, the vice president said. Alfred, what did we find? If you can unmute for me. Some of the earlier points that were right. made. Um, one on the, the economy recovering to pre-pandemic levels, right? I think it's important that we not only look at GDP growth, but, but also look at those indicators that actually impact people's personal economy. Um, because if, I mean, if in terms of GDP growth, if you look at the seasonally adjusted um, quarterly data, you and compare it to the period right before the pandemic, so like the 2019 quarter four, when you look at the data over time, the Ghanaian economy, at least in GDP growth, started recovering that long time ago, like at least just on GDP growth. But that's that's not enough, right? We have to think about inflation, we have to think about the exchange rate movement, we have to think about the interest rates, all those things that actually impact people's economy when we are talking about the economy recovering. So I um, just wanted to make that point. But I mean, on the jobs, the interesting thing is, you know, we keep talking about the inconsistencies in the numbers, right? Because when the in August we we talk we we're hearing about some 1.4 million jobs in the public sector and about 900,000 jobs in the private sector, and then now in November we are hearing that there's about 1.2 million jobs in the public sector and about 1.4 million jobs in the private sector. So is it that within that time frame there has been some losses in, of jobs in the public sector and some gains in the private sector? Uh, I think that's too short of a time for that for that change to be happening, right? Um, but back to the major point. Um, we, we have had about 2.3 million jobs. Now we're hearing about 2.6 million jobs. So of course, um, what we have to do is we have to verify that. Um, and I think the, the doctor that you were speaking to earlier um, had from the Ministry of Finance, I think was talking about um, the fact that there can be one source. I mean, ideally, um, the source of any labor market data should be from the Ghana Statistical Service, yeah. right? When, when in, you know, in economies all over the world, it's the, at least in the developed world, uh, they're usually referring to data from the, the National Stats Agency using this labor force surveys. Um, of course, we don't have that consistently, but ideally that should be the source of data. Um, but here, the, the, we're hearing that 2.6 million, um, the vice president was mentioning, uh, talking about SNET and stuff. So what we wanted to do then is let's look at different sources, at least publicly av available data. So the Ghana Stats Service, um, because we, we mentioned public jobs, which you're also looking at the controller and accountant general department. Um, controller alone is not enough because not every public sector worker that's paid by controller. So we also look at the state-owned enterprises who um, are reported on by the by SIGA. Um, and that Professor Buckman was making a good point earlier because if we have created these jobs, we should see a reflection in the tax data. So GRA data is another source that we looked at. And then ultimately we also look at SNET data because the vice president actually said that the jobs, at least from the private sector, is based on data from SNET. And so we, we, we look at that as well. Um, and I think it's important that we also define this job, right? Because um, when you look at the government's performance tracker, um, it provides some definition of the jobs that they are talking about here. They are talking about um, the people whose employment are sustainable, meets the tenets of decent work, especially in terms of ensuring that okay. they have the pensions and uh, the right at work in line with the mandate of the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations. So, um, and I think last time, Alfred, you had put a question to somebody and they really confirmed that we are talking about the more formal jobs, yeah. right? Which is why, you know, earlier when you had mentioned some 5 million jobs, I think at that time they may have been also even including like the jobs through like planning for planting for food and jobs and those are more informal agricultural types of jobs. But I think in these 2.6 million, based on what we've, we've gathered so far, they're talking about like the more formal jobs. Yeah. So part of part of our checks was, like I said, the Ghana Start Service. Let's look at the growth in the employed population. So in 2015, we had a labor force survey. That was the only time that we actually did a labor force, labor force survey. We the estimated number of people that were working where it was about 9.3 million. Um, we didn't have much going on. There was something the GLS test. But we didn't have much until this. The Ghana Start Service in 2022 started doing this annual household income and employment survey. Um, now, 
because the labor force survey is a nationally representative survey and then the a the AHIS is also a nationally representative survey we can use both to just figure out like you know uh, you know in a, uh, more in a broader sense like how has employment situation changed over time um when you look when you look at between those two at least up to 2023 it's about um it's about 1.5 million in the growth in the total number of employed people this is this is not um this is not just formal sector jobs this is just jobs in regardless of the level of formality right um yeah. and then the other the other point that i want to make is let's look at the structure of the labor market because if you are creating a lot of these kinds of jobs we should see some shift in the labor market. We should see some shift in the structure of the labor market. Everybody knows that the Ghanaian labor market is largely dominated by self-employed people without employees, right? But these jobs, the ones that are, you know, have pensions or sustainable, a lot of those are supposed to be formal jobs. So a lot of those, so we should see a reflection in the percentage of people that are in wage employment. Right. When you look at 2017 from the GLSS and look at 2023 from the AHIS, you will see that actually the percentage of people that are in wage employment has marginally declined. Yes. Whereas the people that are self-employed without employees, which is the more informal sector jobs, have actually increased slightly. So I, I ask myself, if there has been about 2.3 million or about 2.6 million yes. jobs that have been created, shouldn't that really cause a fundamental shift? Because it is estimated that about the total number of employed people in Ghana, according to the AHIS, is about 11 million, a little over 11 million. So 2.6 is almost a quarter of that. So if 2.6 is about a quarter of 11 million, it should really cause a change in the structure of the labor market. But actually, what this is showing is that the people that are in wage employment, the percentage of people that are in wage employment is actually declining. So that doesn't really support that. So then I said, okay, well, and then the other thing is, the other part of this also is, the, in the AHIS, they actually ask the, the sectors that people are working in. So when you average for 2022, and a lot of my references is 2022 because the, the more detailed data that we've actually received from the vice president, which is what was, what was breaking down the jobs like ministries, was as of 2022, right? And I mean, the 2023 now, even as of 2022, it was still about 2.25 million. So there's, the, if you add, it's about just about 350,000 difference that has added. So, but generally, when you look at that, um, you see that in the in the his what we are here, what we are learning is in the public sector, people that work in the public sector. Yes, because we saw we, we saw a lot right, in the Ghana Police Service, Prison Service, Immigration Service, yeah. uh, state-owned enterprises, uh, trade and industry ministry agencies. Th that was the breakdown they gave as of the time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And 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 when you look at uh, his. There's about just about 700,000 people that, are, that say they work in the public sector. In the private sector, it's about 940,000. So you see that even, even that, yes. it doesn't match up to these numbers that we're hearing, about 1.4 million, 1.2 million. Because what we need to prove is we need to prove that number. And then we also need to prove that um, the number has to be over and above those that were working in those sectors before the government took power in 2017. Yeah. Right? So even... Just looking at that, we are not even able to prove close to that 1.4 million that we are getting as new jobs that have been created to then now factor in those that were working to get the full population of people that are actually working in these sectors. Um, we, you can also look at- So that's, that's what you have on the screen there. So the Ghana Scout Service Survey, uh, this is the source of the bar graph you're seeing is the Ghana Scout Service Annual Household Income and Employment Survey quarter one to quarter four of 2022, and that captured right. 722,595,000 ,595, public sector jobs and private sector 939,967 people employed in the private sector. This is Ghana Social Service. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Then, so if we can go to the next slide, um, then we also look at the, pop, the staff strength in, in the control and account general department. Mm. And like, you know, previously when we make this argument, people say that, you know, controller doesn't pay everybody. And that is true. Like, if you think of it, like the Ghana Armed Forces, like the police, the even some of the public universities manage their own payrolls, right? But they get subvention from government to manage their payroll. And so the controller also reports on their staff strength as well. You see the growth here. So you see that, you know, it was like from 620, you know, 2018 to now, as of 2023, it was about 804,000. Again, that is still not, not close 
to the 1.1.2 mm -hmm. if it is 1.2 we are working or if it's 1.4 million depending on which one we, we can use the minimum the lower number it still doesn't match up to that because even if we got we got exactly that we then have to take into account okay which people were actually working in the uh, and getting and getting working and getting paid through controller mm. um before the government took power in 2017 right so you see that these numbers are not adding up so somebody then people said yeah not everybody gets paid by controller so let's look at the state-owned enterprises as well so coco board um you know all the gmpcs all those other companies the siga reports on their staff strength there yeah. and when this is this is how it looks like over time and even siga has been making some modifications to the 2019 2021 data which i highlighted in red but when you look at this it's even that is also under a hundred thousand right as of 20 this is all cumulative as of 2023 it is under under um 100,000. So even if we take that number, right, assuming it's 100,000 and add it to the 800,000 that's on controller, that's 900,000. That is still under the 1.2 million that we have now. Yeah. And then what about the people that were even working before, right? So this is, so based on the basis of GSS data, on the basis of SIGA data, and then obviously of controller data, we cannot get anything close to the numbers that we have been, that we've seen bundled around as the jobs that have been created in the public sector and even overall then professor this is back to professor Bachman's point about tax data so th this is the this is the growth this is the the uh gra data over the last um over the last five years right 2023 um gra says the, this is the people that are the active um uh, payee right so it's about 2.6 million as of as of the end of 2023 or somebody say well that 2.6 million matches up with the vice president what the vice president was saying but what about the people that were working before I was saying that when the gas this government came to power, there was there was nobody working, <laughs> and then now these people are happy. Yes. So <laughs> the two point six, the two point six million we see is not jobs created between twenty seventeen and twenty twenty four. No, are, this is the active taxpayers on for, the GRE. For, for as long as what from nineteen ninety two to date. Oh, let's put it that way. Yes. Oh, to date, okay. or oh, from Kwame Nkrumah's <laughs> period to date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. and, and 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 actually a good test, right? A good test is what you could, what we, what I, I even try to do is you can look at 2019. So how many jobs the vice president said have been created, right? And then look at the difference between the 2019 uh, data and the 2020 data. See how many new taxpayers have been added and compare it to how many jobs. You will see that the number the, the number doesn't match. You don't even get about half of that. Mm -hmm. So so that, that that tells you that that number cannot because again you are saying that these jobs are trackable so if it is if these jobs are trackable it should reflect in the taxpaying population that is not happening and this is even assuming that any 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 person that comes on the tax bracket is, is a new job and not that you know GRA has enhanced compliance or anything right mm -hmm. this is all assuming that any new taxpayer is a new job that has been created by the government which would be a very generous assumption in the first place um the other thing i did was okay let's look at i took the tax data this is the pay tax data and then inflation adjusted it and then look at it over time you see it's flat like like even maybe 2020 2020 there was a dip mostly mm -hmm. because obviously because of covid but yeah. you see that generally it's not changing that much right sure. so but again 2.6 million is a lot of jobs. So mm -hmm. if you have done that, it should see you should see a reflection of that yeah. in the tax revenue that you are getting from mm -hmm. from uh, from uh, the personal income taxes. This is personal income tax mm -hmm. data. You don't see that. Um, other point is on SNETs because again we've heard that Vice President has said that the data is from SNET. It is verifiable from SNET. Well, you have to look at active contributors and SNIT, the definition of active contributors is actually very loose since says that in the in the previous 12 months if you if there's been at least one payment for you you are considered an active, active contributor to SNET. so you look at 2016 there were about 1.3 million 1.35 million active um SNET contributors at the end of 2023 there's about 1.97 million yeah. right so mm -hmm. over that period there's just been under 600,000 um growth in the active task com uh, contributors. Somebody can say, well, factor in pension. But the total of people that are on pension is about 200,000, right? So mm -hmm. it's not pension that is explaining this. So how come these jobs, right, these jobs that are supposed to be sustainable, they're supposed to have pension and all of that, how is that not reflecting in the active taxpaying uh, population? So, you know, on the basis of all these different data sources, 
we cannot really verify these numbers, right? And so, and at the end of the day, it's not that the vice president brought 2.6 million people to an auditorium and said, we have employed all these people, check. We don't have that. We, so what we can do is we can use all these different other data sources to try to make inferences and figure out, like, is this really reflecting? And so on the right. basis of these, like, we cannot, we cannot verify those 2.6 million jobs. Right. Hmm. Uh, I was working quite some good work there by, by yeah. Alfred, is it not? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, so, I mean, and that's why I said that uh, before they probably put this information out there, they need to check for multiple sources, right? Mm. And all of that should be telling the same story. But as Otherwise, um, it's problematic. If, 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 if you employ someone as a casual person, you are supposed to pay SNIT. And so mm. if they capture all that, it does not make it a sustainable job as available. So you have to, you know, ensure that you, you really put them in perspective. Otherwise, right. we'll be producing wrong data and assuming that people are still in employment. They are not. Mr. Mr. Adams has a word on this. We'll go for this quick break. When we're back, come to him. Stay with us. This is Key Point. Thank you very much. And this is Key Point here on TV3. We're live on 3FM 92.7, also on TV3 Ghana on Facebook and DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. And uh, Ms. Kofi Adams is going to come in here uh, to make a quick point on this. And a number of your messages, this one says, great job by Alfred and the details giving there. Professor Godfrey Bocking has brought the light in the midst of all the darkness, uh, you say. And then also, um, our producers, my producers have checked in the status of that particular case um, involving Javi Bidris that lawyer Matik Pebo made reference to. And also, because of the current state of that particular case, we cannot associate ourselves, obviously, with that um, earlier comment made. Uh, but, Ms. Adams, please. Well, clearly, you could not have assembled a better the personalities to deal with this subject matter that has been raised, uh, maybe I would say, on a political platform by the vice president who is seeking to present information to prove that he's done a good job and therefore be given the mandate to lead. But the good the vice president could have done to himself is to at least speak the truth. Don't keep yourself so apart from the truth. Because the reality on the ground that people feel is completely different from what it is that he presents anytime he speaks to very important and clear issues. Look, the World Bank report says that over 800,000 Ghanaians mm -hmm. have been moved to, into poverty uh, 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 level mm -hmm. as a result of policies and programs. And consistently, they have presented data that has become so difficult for anybody to make sense out of. When the budget was read in November of 2023 for the 2024 year, they told us that uh, private sector jobs was about what, 900,000. 900, mm -hmm. Then public sector was 1.4 million. Then in 2024, the vice president now organizes a lecture at UPSC and gave us data where he said the private sector has grown by 70,000 addition to 970,000. And interestingly, the public sector had dropped from 1.4 million to now what? 1.2 million in the uh, words of the vice president. Then subsequently, they now launched the performance tracker. And in the performance tracker, they now tell us the private sector is now 267,000 uh, and the public sector yes. had jumped to 1.8 million. If you take these three figures, you clearly cannot defend the information that is put out there by this government. It's therefore not surprising that the technical advisor at the Ministry of uh, uh, Finance, Dr. Abdel uh, Ghanim, cannot even tell us the source of the data that they want to push onto us as Ghanaians to work with. So clearly, they are just packaging a misinformation. But Alfred, are you aware 
that a government that should be talking about proper job creation and growth, proper growth of the economy, is sponsoring an advert against a suggestion and a proposition that people will be supported to go into poultry farming. Look, I remember those days, those of us who live in Tema, when you get to all the areas called uh, Afariwa and all those areas, he used to employ a lot of young persons in the poultry industry. The NDC administration pushed further an agenda that to import poultry, you have to invest about 40% and be seen to be buying 40% from the local sources. That forced all these persons of interest to import in investing in the local industry. All that was thrown away by this government. Today, when we are suggesting the need to go into such area that will create jobs and spare the economic, that growth that will be creating jobs, the MPP is sponsoring an advert against that. Because for them, all they think about is mining, where they will give license legal and illegal for people to mine in water bodies, to mine in, 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 in forest reserves, and to destroy our environment. So they don't realize the need to invest in this other very critical area. Another point that I want to raise. Okay. You see, the buffer stock was intentionally created by the NDC to buy off from the farmers the surplus and stock it for release during the lean period. Today, right. the buffer stock has become another agency that just give contracts to persons to import foods. Mm. Import food, some of which has not been certified by Foods and Drugs Authority and is supplied to schools under school feeding program. This is what is happening. Buffer stock that was established to play a critical role that will spare agriculture growth is now performing completely something different. And the NDC administration will relook into this and reposition buffer stock so that people who decide to go into farming will not suffer to sell their produce. There will be market, there will be processing, and what have you. And that is where more jobs right. will be created in the agri sector, in the processing, and what have you. And when we talk then, you will see real job creation, not the Baumia audio jobs. Okay. Not the Baumia audio jobs. And he should spare us those bold lies he present as bold solutions. He should spare what? us. Well, uh, Mr. Kofi Adams, thank you. And Alfred Techi is a data scientist who joined us from, um, uh, Alfred Techi up here is a data scientist who joined us from, from Canada. Alfred is going to be uh, with us for the next three sessions before the elections and Professor Godfred Bobkin as well. Next week we have a conversation on the DDEP. Was it a necessary evil? or one mm -hmm. that the finance ministry can also refer to as a success. Uh, Professor Godfrey Bokken, really do appreciate yours always uh, making the time to be here. And this morning, I was clothed by Kogra Clothing, the best version of you, Kogra Clothing, C-O-L-G-R-A. Locate them on the Splinters Road, 18 Junction, opposite the Allied Oil Filling Station, ground floor, same building with the Ghana Made Store. Call them on 244 Two three eight three four one zero two four four two three eight three four one, or on WhatsApp zero five zero zero nine thousand ninety nine. Choose Cobra Clothing. Choose right. The number is zero two four four two three eight three four one. On behalf of the rest of the team, appreciate you. And Mr. Game, thank you so much for coming. Ms. Adams, thank you for coming. Also, thank you. Uh, Professor Godfrey Buckman, appreciate you. Also, Lawyer Martin Bebu, thank you. And we also have, uh, and here joining us on Zoom, Samola Tachia, uh, and then also Dr. Abdul Ghaniu, all members of the MPP. And then also the Lawyer Kinsley Amwakwa Buedu, who's also a member of the MPP. All three of them joined us uh, virtually. On behalf of the rest of the team, thank you so much for staying with us here on Keypoint. Have a great weekend. Join us same time next week. I'm Alfred Kansi.